historic Keel Auditorium in downtown St. Louis, where tonight the 7-7 seven seven Millicans of St. Louis will host the 7-4 Salukis of Southern Illinois. Good evening. Welcome back to Midnight Madness here on ESPN. I'm Dan Patrick, joined by former Memphis State great John Albright. Well, you're on the team at least there. You look at this game tonight, these two teams met earlier in the season, and it was Southern Illinois blowing out St. Louis at Southern Illinois by 39 points. The prognosis for St. Louis to return the favor doesn't look too good. Well, the reason is Rich Grower is going to have to go into tonight's game without his leading score and his leading assist man. Kevin Foots is on an indefinite suspension. He won't be here to help tonight. Well, tell you, St. Louis's problems, they've got more of them coming up. As for the Billikens, they come in 7-7. Seven and seven. Coach Heron told his team earlier today, guard against being overconfident because he knew the Billikens were banged up. He said, I've been in this situation before. And here are the Billikens. They're led by Mr. Luchtefeld, who's got a little family background with the Billikens. He's going to have to shoot the three. He comes in shooting 102 three-pointers for Rich Grower's club. He's going to have to be very effective from the outside if the Billikens are going to escape here with a win. Luchtefeld's father and uncle both played for the Billikens. Southern Illinois, the defending Missouri Valley Conference champs, they lost one key ingredient last year. That was Freddie McSwain, who was their leading scorer. And yes, they did have the convincing victory over the Billikens at Southern Illinois earlier this year. As for St. Louis, well, they've averaged 21 victories the last five years, but they lost a player Rich Grower said is the best to ever play for St. Louis, Anthony Bonner, who's now with the Sacramento Kings. It'll be Southern Illinois. In the red, the Billikens in the home white, and the Salukis control the tap. Dan, it'd be very important for the Salukis to get a good start offensively so that the Billikens can't rely on that four corners offense and shorten the game. Gonna have a jump ball, the possession arrow, we'll go to the Billikens. Now Rich Heron told us today that he would not chase St. Louis initially. Again, you're gonna see the four corners look at 20 seconds. That'll be the key. That's when St. Louis should look to start their offense. Right now you've got a passive man-to-man. -man. This isn't an all-out denial. St. Louis trying to shorten up the basketball game. Personnel-wise, they've got some problems, and they're trying to shorten it up. And that's one thing they can't do. They can't afford any turnovers, although it was deflected. St. Louis will retain the ball. The first five minutes are very key in this ball game because St. Louis has to have a lead or at least be close. When they played at Southern, they were blown out early, never got into the flow of the game. And this is an undermanned team. There's the turnover problem. Tyrone Bell with his steal. It'll be St. Louis's basketball. Another reason that Rich Heron wants to get an early start is the four corners, it's not an offense used to catch up. It's an offense used to, to run some time off the clock. It can't be an effective offense if you go to denying it very effectively. Stewart misses with a hand in his face. Kelvin Lawrence to Tyrone Bell. Lewis opening up in a 2-3 zone. That's a matchup principle, so look for them to go zone most of the night. Ordinarily, Grauer, if he were at full strength, he likes to play man-to-man, -man, but because of the personnel situation, he's had to go to a lot of zone. Bell with a tough shot, got it to drop in the first two points of the evening. Orlando Stewart right there with the basketball. He's got a very difficult assignment. He's the quarterback out there. He's got to set the tempo to run this four-quarter spread offense effectively. The Billikens have had a turnover and a missed shot. That's not the way Rich Grower wanted it to start out. Luchtefeld with a steal and then bumped by Sterling Mahan. Right on the ground. Rich Grower was concerned what kind of crowd they'd have tonight because he said he took a lot of heat in the press earlier today, this past week, as he suspended Kevin Foots as their best, uh, best player, leading scorer. But he didn't want to get into the reasons why he was suspended. He did say there's an opportunity. The door is open for Mr. Foots. He's got to do some things to get back on, but it is an indefinite suspension at this point. They've taken 25 seconds off the shot clock. Again, they're in 20 seconds now. They're running their offense. Now they're looking to score. Down to six on the shot clock. Stewart's going to have to force one up and got it to drop. 
Counted it as a three, and St. Louis takes the early lead. Lawrence returns the favor and nails a three as well. Defensively, St. Louis has got to recognize where the shooters for Southern Illinois are. You can't leave somebody wide open. Tadisak couldn't come up with it. Lawrence. Oshrock Amaya with the assist from Sterling Mahan. Nice job by the Salukis of executing that break. And early on, they've run when they've had it. Pretty good start so far for Rich Aaron's club. Southern Illinois has a tremendously balanced team. They've got outside shooters. They play good defense. And they've got good inside rebounding with Shipley and Amaya. They've got a couple of kids off the bench who are seven-footers. Rich Heron has a pretty talented team. Well, athletically, they've got superior athletes to St. Louis. They can really go up and down the floor very well. Whitman Dillard misses and the rebound. And the Saluki's on the break again. Mahan for three off the back iron with Stewart on the rebound. And seven-foot Melvin Robinson set the check in for the Billikens. Now, that's the danger. Stewart knows if they got the spread offense, he shouldn't be concerned about running it up and down. He's got to get under control and recognize what they're doing. They've got a roll situation, and everybody's got to stay within that roll. Look at the on the back door. Shipley rebounds from the seat of his depending on which team you are. It's a night to remember or a night to forget. Southern Illinois did everything right against St. Louis December 1st at Southern Illinois with 108 points, six players in double figures, and you had the key ingredients doing it again. Mahan had 28 in that game, a season high for him. Both coaches agreed it really was a 20-point game that got away, but nonetheless, it was a big night if you're a Saluki fan. nearly five minutes here at Kiel Auditorium, a building that's been around since the 20s. They play the NBA championship game here, the old St. Louis Hawks title game. Beat the Boston Celtics back in the late 50s. Mahan nearly knocked it in. And you have to give that basket to the nearest Billiken if Mahan put it in. That would have been a tough call. Three on two break. Orlando Stewart. Good recognition that time by Stewart. They had the numbers, and he took good advantage of it. That wasn't a force, and that's got the Billikens within two. Will the kind of style that St. Louis is playing have any effect on Southern Illinois at the offensive end? It can, because defensively, particularly if they don't come out and attack it aggressively, it relaxes you, and that could carry over into what you do offensively. Of course, much improved basketball team. No longer can they be the doormat of the ACC. They're going to create some problems. Stewart with the tray. You said he was the key tonight for St. Louis. He's the quarterback. He's got to set the tone offensively, and although he's only a sophomore, he's going to grow up a lot tonight having to go against Sterling Mayhem. Early on, you have to be impressed with what St. Louis has done. Duff. And the Billikens fall to within one. Dan, what this does also is if you're a St. Louis player, now you start feeling confident. You're not worried about Southern Illinois' reputation. You start feeling, hey, we're at home. We can win this thing. Five minutes and points. You said the first five minutes would be the key. Now we've played almost ten, and St. Louis is hanging tough. The key for St. Louis, though, is to stay within the structure that's got them to this point. Don't try to get beyond what they've been doing successfully. Now they kick it out. Look for them now to spread it. Start the four corner. Good job by Stewart. Mecca of Kenwa set the check in for Southern Illinois and Rashid Shabazz for St. Louis. Pretty passive Southern Illinois defense at this point. Yes, this could carry over offensively for the Salukis. Dillard over Shipley. Trying to give the Billikens the lead, can't do it. But a good shot out of what they wanted to do. Southern Illinois has been all perimeter the last few trips down. Look for him to try to get it inside. Just to say that, Mahan says, forget that. I'm the senior. He'll launch it. He can do that. He's got the green light. Luck to Feld. I'm going to call him for traveling. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of Creative Sports Marketing in association with ESPN. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this telecast without the written consent of Creative Sports Marketing and ESPN is prohibited. 
You mentioned Rich Grauer coming out of high school to take over this program, a program that was labeled brain dead by one basketball magazine, and you see what he's done to revitalize the school program. Since 86, that's what you ought to focus in on. Look at the, look at the number there. Really an outstanding job by Grauer because he has completely turned this program around in the positive direction. He said it was probably going to be a 500 season for the Billikens after the NIT team of a year ago that lost in the championship game. Mahan for three. Tadisak with a rebound as he and Rich Grauer right in front of us and applauding the rebound. Very demonstrative coach. Very honest with us earlier today. He just said, hey, I don't know what these kids are going to do, but I did something that I believed in. I sat down Kevin Foots. He's our best player, but I want to save this kid because down the road, he's not going to have somebody who's going to be looking out for him. Well, one of the things he was concerned about is team playing through adversity. After this point, he's a little concerned about that. Sometimes when you go through adversity, it brings you closer together. And I think that's what we're seeing out there right now with the Billikens. In the shot clock, they run it down effectively again, exactly what their game plan called for. Luck to fell for three. They took it down to three on the shot clock. Lawrence for three. Good. Well, you knew it was going to happen. Uh, you finally got it in. Shabazz. And the turnover for the Billikens. Melvin Robinson set to check in, along with Whitman Dillard. Robinson's got to be a little more aggressive inside, a little too passive. Needs to be a force. He's a seven-footer. Getting a good look at Rich Grauer. Doing a good job of getting people in and out. Trying to play all the right chords here tonight. I think he's also experimenting with his lineup because most of these guys don't play at the same time. Again, coming into the year, a lot of these guys were role players. They would play, but not nearly in the capacity that they're having to tonight. Starters and also key contributors. Wynn looking for his second three of the night. Can't get it. Stewart on the break. Whitman Dillard. Again, good job. The break was there. The Billikens didn't force it. Good recognition. And Dillard got down on the block. Good job. Matt Wynn, NBA three-point range. Robinson with the rebound. Out to Stewart. And here come the Billikens. Got to pull it back out now. It's not there. Kick it out and reset your four corners. Exactly what he'll do. Good job by Orlando Stewart. 21-16, Southern Illinois leading as they have all game long as we are inside eight minutes to go here in the first ten. Dan, defensively, you could get frustrated guarding this spread offense. You go for a steal, you don't get it, then your man goes back door and he gets an easy layup. Stewart forced it. Boy, Lawrence was wide open. They didn't see him in time. Luck to Feld. Christian Okoye is tough to tackle, but no one tackles a tough NFL story better than the comprehensive Emmy Award-winning NFL Game Day. Now on Saturdays and Sundays on ESPN. Georgetown's Dikembe Mutombo tries to block Villanova's upset attempt. Then catch some Hoosier hysteria as Damon Bailey leads Indiana against Purdue. All part of a Big Monday triple header live on ESPN. Of those 16 points the Billikens have scored, 14 have been provided by either Dillard or Stewart. We've yet to hear from Jeff Luchtefeld, their second leading scorer. Look at the three-point numbers. St. Louis doing a very good job, two out of three. Southern Illinois struggling from the three-point range, and that's because of the zone. St. Louis has forced them to take that shot. Again, that's one of the reasons that look for them to try to get it inside if you're the Salukis, because they're not hitting effectively from outside at this point. Chris Lowry checks in. Replace a Sterling Mayhan, and Stewart beats him to the hoop. Stewart has done a very good job running this Rich Grauer offense so far tonight. Lowry loses it out of bounds. Luchtefeld checks in, and Orlando Stewart gets a well-deserved rest. Don't look for Stewart to stay on the bench very long, because he's the key for the offense. Luchtefeld, he'll now take over the quarterbacking roles. Luchtefeld, Duff, Whitman Dillard, Melvin Robinson. 
in the four corners that Phil Ford in North Carolina made such a deadly weapon. 45 second shot clock has eliminated the success of this on a large scale. But tonight we're seeing it resurrected, being pretty effective here in the first half. That's dumb. That was not an easy shot. He was leaning away from it. Good range. Duff and Luckefeld, they are the three-point shooters for the Billikens. Lowry comes back. Shipley with the rebound to follow. And Duff with the rebound. Coach Grower said Duff can't shoot with somebody in his face. He did that time. Now today, in the shoot-around, Stewart was supposed to handle the ball 80% of the time. Luck to fell 15, and that left Guff 5%. And he said he didn't want anybody else in that equation. Shipley got a piece of Dillard's offering. He's looking to take their first lead of the night. We're approaching six minutes to play in the first half, and we're knotted at 21, and Stewart didn't stay on the bench too long. Just a quick breather. He's too valuable to what they're trying to do offensively out there. He's such a good ball handler. And again, because of his side, he's got a low center of gravity. Rich Grower with a very interesting game plan, but so far has been very, very effective tonight. Things got so bad for Rich Grower. He asked for volunteers. He had one student who came out to practice for one day and then quit and said it was too tough. He says, I can't win. Spread offense. Again, as Southern Illinois gets frustrated, they come out and try to deny and go for the steal. There's backdoor opportunities. Defensively, you also have to be very patient, just like offensively operating this four corners. Now they'll run it and get in their offense. Duff tried to throw the alley-oop to Melvin Robinson and had a little more alley than oop. That sent Rich Grower to the other end of the pitch walking on the sideline. They didn't like that shot at all. Shipley with the miss and Dillard with the rebound. Now defensively, once Stewart gives it up, or puts it up in this case, once he gives it up, you got to deny him getting the ball back. Orlando Stewart came into this game averaging eight points a game, but with Kevin Foote sitting down for disciplinary reasons, Stewart has been taking the green light. Mayhan for three. See, again, everything's perimeter so far for the Salukis. They're not co connecting. Got to get some inside shots. Duff at the other end. Mayhan got a piece of it. And it's going to stay Billiken's ball. They have a three-point lead. We're inside five minutes to play in the first half. Now, this is the situation where the four corners is so much more effective. You've got the lead. You don't have to rush it. Defensively, you've got to do something to stop that man's club. And that's when you start making defensive error. You start leaning, reaching, anticipating. You don't get it, and your man goes back door, and you end up giving up layups. Orlando Stewart has 13 points already in the first half. It's also got to be a positive sign, I think, John, for... The Salukis now facing a team where Luchtefeld hasn't been able to get too many shots, but then the other end of that, you got St. Louis who says Luchtefeld hasn't scored yet. He's our second leading scorer, and we're leading by three. Okay, that's what we talked about. This is a team that's coming closer together. Without Foots, their leading score, you can see them. They're getting a lot of confidence now in each other. So it doesn't matter that Luchtefeld's not scoring. Somebody else, in this case Stewart, is rising to the occasion. St. Louis is the last 10 points to take a three-point lead as we head towards the four-minute mark. Your bell, once your man Stewart gives it up, denying the basketball, don't let him get it back because he's the key. That's easier said than done. It's very difficult defensively. It takes a lot of energy out of you to do that. There's good defense. Five-second call. Good job by Tyrone Bell, closely guarding, trying to loosen up that zone. It's Lawrence Mahan. This is Wynn. Oshramp Amaya and Rick Shipley. Shipley has been very quiet for seven minutes. He's really dangerous around the basket. Sterling Mahan brings the Salukis to within one. Yeah, Mahan, he's only six feet, but he shows you he can go inside. Bringing it back out again. Good recognition by the Billikens. Not trying to do anything that they're not set up to do. They know their limitations, and as long as they stay within that role, they're going to be effective. And they have problems when they start stretching it beyond what their game plan is. Coach Brower was concerned. He didn't know if his team could play this kind of offense. Dillard gets the ball to drop. They've called an offensive foul. Let's see if they count the basket. I 
think they gave him the basket, Dan. Well, we're not sure because Rich Grower wants to find out. We'll find out as we go to break. We think it's 26-23. We'll let you know. Billikens can't afford to lose any points. They just had two taken away, John. Well, it's a good call. Let's watch why this basket is no good. Now, watch where the contact with Dillard occurs. If the contact occurs after that ball is released, the basket's good. Contact occurs, it's not released, basket no good. Excellent call by the official. I didn't think it was a charge. I thought Shipley leaned into it. We may go at it right now. 24-23, Saluki's trailing by one. 3.20 to play in the first half. Salukis would like to get Maya and Shipley, the two inside guys, involved offensively. Been very quiet because of the St. Louis zone. Salukis have done everything perimeter pretty much here in the first half. St. Louis coaching staff saying, watch out for Wynn, who's got the ball now. He's in there for one reason, that's the long, the long shot. He just hovers at that three-point line, but Mayhan will do the honors and nails the three. Now, if they can put together a couple of those outside shots, that'll loosen up the zone, extend it, where they can get some inside passes. Mayhan with 11. This is the first game he's been back. He was projected as a starter preseason. Up for three. And what may turn out to be four. This play will just drive you crazy if you're a coach. Duff well beyond the three-point line. If you can't block it, there's no way you should even get close to this. Amaya comes in too late. See, he's trying to hold up. Nothing he can do. Catches Duff, but that's an infraction. Gets the foul, and Duff hits the three-point shot. Well, if that's you a big play. Duff didn't want him to catch him. He, like, pushed him away to make it seem like he ran into it. Question, are they going to say that was after the shot and give him the basketball? Good call. They're going to give him one free throw. That's the correct call. A St. Louis a St. assist from Rich Brower, though, telling him what to call. Well, the St. Louis players, I think they wanted possession of it. They want to say it occurred after the shot, give him the three-point, then give him the basketball back. But anyway, Duff will be at the line to try to finish off a possible four-point play. Duff's a starter. Beginning of the year, Foots and Wallace is the starting backcourt. Again, he's one of the role players that's having now to play in a starting capacity. Done a good job tonight. He may reach his average on this time down the floor for his fifth consecutive point. And the Billikens lead up to four, their biggest of the game. Duff already has ten points. Again, if you look at the numbers, this game projected right now, right in the 60s, that's where Rich Grower wanted it. You have to be shocked at this score right now. It's surprising. Well, one of the things is, Southern Illinois hadn't been able to go up and down the court like they wanted to. Everything's been perimeter, and they have not shot extremely well in the first half. And it's one shot and done. Here's Duff again. Good job. Now you got to kick it back out. There really was nothing there. Stewart was... They've got the pick the defensive intensity up and got to turn around at this end of the court. Now that four-corner offense is in St. Louis's favor. They can milk some time off this clock. A minute 50 to go in the first half of the Billikens leading it by four. Dan Patrick along with John Albright. And a second again, set the offense up. That's just like they designed it today at the shoot-around. Just like Rich Grower and his coaching staff worked on today, and it pays dividends. We asked Coach Grower what Duff did well. He said, shoot the three. I said, what else? He said, shoot, shoot the three. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. Duff with the steal, and Mahan steals it back. Oh, oh. Oh, he's got to be patient, not to try to get it all back at once. They turn it over. Luck to Bell for three. Both of his threes have been wide open, and he's missed them. Four on two break. Tyrone Bell. And that's something for Rich Heron's club. They want to see more of transition game. They didn't have a lot of opportunities in the first half. That's tough. Shipley didn't know where the line was. His head and his upper shoulders. There. Ed Hattower right on top of it. Shipley didn't know where it was. That's good hustle on both parts. Carlos 
Mike Skinner checking in. We've seen limited play tonight. But keep in mind, coming back from a broken leg. Had much time to practice, and you've got to be out of sync, both in terms of running your offense and defense, but also physically. In the four corners, we've seen it all night from the Billikens. They've done a good job again of making the transition from the four corners into their offense. 20 seconds again, the key, when they kick it into the offense and look to score offensively. Duck on Wynn, the tough shot. Wynn got a piece of it, and Amaya with a rebound. That's one of the few bad shots that the Billigans have taken tonight. Amaya all alone. Got it inside. The key, again, getting the inside people involved for Southern Illinois. They have a tremendous inside advantage when they can utilize it. Rich Grauer, he's got off the last six points to pull to within one. Did a good job of getting Oshraf Amaya the inside game involved. Good swing, but inside you see Amaya finish it off in strong fashion. That's something Rich Heron would like to see more of in the second half for his point. But again, the familiar four corners. St. Louis staying within their game plan. Look to build nearly lost it. Illinois starting to take a little more chances, starting to pick up that pressure just a little bit more man-to-man -man wise. Stewart forced it up. Quitman Dillard couldn't bring it down. It'll be Southern's ball as they have a chance to retake the lead, a lead they held for 12 minutes of the first half before St. Louis on fire from three-point range. Well, all the scoring in the second half has been by Southern Illinois. They're pitching a shutout. But more importantly, as you mentioned, a chance to regain the lead. Amaya first two. That's tough. Again, they got the ball inside. Good high percentage shot. Just couldn't finish it off. Stewart with the drive. Draws the foul. Gets the hoop. Sterling Mahan's face said it all. He did everything he could do. Stretched as high as he could go. And Stewart was still just too far. Shipley trying to get his first two points of the night. You see the contact. Shipley at point rank range, can't get it. It's gonna fall over right on the floor. At the other end, and this is one on one. Look at Mayhem, everything he could do, can't get it. He just says, what have I gotta do? Good job by Stewart, he did that a couple times in the first half. Good decision, when to push it, when to kick it out and set the four corners up. Stewart with 15 points, can't draw number 16, but the Billikens lead it by three. We approach the 15 minute mark. And we'll drop back in that 2-3 zone. In that most of the first half. Defense, you get a chance to relax if they don't pick up the defensive pressure. St. Louis 1 of 11 here in the second half, and they still lead it by 3. Duff forces it up. Can't get it to drop. Had a sack, had a hand on it. Maya's got to give it up. He's not the man they want triggering the fast break. He did give it up, and he got it back. Amaya runs the floor extremely well for a 6'8 player. Very fluid. You're right. He can go up and down all night long. He has the complete game. Freshman of the year last year in the Missouri Valley Conference. Big things are expected from him players and St. Louis doesn't have too many players to play. Well, it's a lot of energy both running the four corners offense and guarding it. Pavlovich who just checked in guarding Luchtefeld and the alley-oop for Robinson won't go. Luchtefeld tried to keep it alive. It'll be Southern's ball. Some of the boo birds out for Melvin Robinson. You really get the feeling if Southern Illinois can put together a couple of buckets, they can turn the momentum clearly in their favor. Southern Illinois has got all the opportunities here in the second half. The St. Louis has not shot well at all. They've only scored two points in the second half. So this game's up for grabs. The salute is if they can get something going, they can turn the momentum of this game around. Lowry loses it inside. Skinner with the steal. And Luckfeld still looking for his first two. Or in his case, his first three. 0 for 5 from the field tonight. We watched him in warm-ups, but then that's warm-ups, and he didn't miss a shot. The 
footer from 15 feet, and that's not the play of Rich Grower diagram. That's one of those Rich Grower immediately stood up as soon as that shot went up, and you can say, no, no, that's the way to go, Melvin. Exactly what I wanted you to do. He could use some confidence. That's Pavlovich for three. Again, that's not on the scouting report either. But what do scouting reports matter? We're all tied up. Pavlovich, who wants to be a commercial pilot, flying the friendly skies from three. His father is a pilot. Plus the starting guard, trying to clear up his academic problems. Melvin Robinson. Kept it alive, and Carlos Skinner comes up with a follow-up. And the Billikens, 39-37, were inside 10 minutes to play. See why rebounding so important. Three missed shots, it doesn't matter because they were 100% on that possession. Amaya answers at the other end. Got to kick it back out now. Stewart is going to be tired before this game is over with, if he's not already. That's key there. They don't want to see him pick up that fourth foul because he's done a good job being a force inside here in the second half. Coach Grower said he was concerned about Melvin Robinson tonight. He said, Melvin kind of goes at his own pace. He said, if I see you yawning at 10.30 or 11 o'clock tonight, Melvin, you're going to be sitting next to me. He said, Melvin kind of lethargic at time. He said, I was worried about him falling asleep this game starting so late. Well, that kind of takes a lot of the starch out of your pregame fiery pep talk to see one of the players <laughs> yawning. <laughs> Billikens regain the lead. They've played a demanding schedule. Lost to Purdue, lost to Houston, lost to a very good Nebraska team. Pavlovich with his second three. He's done a good job coming off the bench. Contributed a couple of big baskets. And more importantly, that's got Southern Illinois in the lead. Count not on. Mahan's got to be within six feet to be considered in guarding distance. Getting inside 20 seconds now. Stewart will now set the offense. Good shot that time by Luckerfell. He didn't think he was going to see Mahan's hand in his face. To the corner, Salukis will try to get a trap. Luckerfell sets down, still yet to score tonight. He was the second leading scorer coming into this game for St. Louis. Stewart says he's the one-man press break, does it nicely, gets him set up, back into, you guessed it, four corners. Stewart is a sophomore has been facing off against Mahan for most of the evening, and Mahan, one of the better point guards in the country. Whitman Dillard. Southern Illinois is using two different guards switching off on Stewart to try to tire him out, and he looks fatigued. His shorts hanging down by his knees. He looks very tired. Mahan didn't control it. That's why he wouldn't call for a walk. If he had control of that, his feet were moving like they were, then that had been a walk. He had control of it, so no call. Shabazz keeps it alive, but Rick Shipley picks up the loose ball. You've got to attack the zone right now. Southern Illinois just passing it around, really not doing anything. Got to move it around, attack it. Duff with the long rebound. Are you still surprised they're not going inside more? Yes, particularly as Pavlovich can see a couple. That'll extend that zone and leave some openings inside. They've been effective when they've been patient. They can get it inside if they want to. Had a sack with the rebound, and Mayhan comes up with a steal. Three on two opportunity now. A oh, good steal by Stewart. He's done everything tonight. game plan today, did you? Orlando Stewart has taken control of this basketball game. He's got 19. The Salukis trail by four. We're inside seven minutes to play. We may see an upset. If not for disciplinary reasons, you may not have been, have been able to have seen this play by Mr. Orlando Stewart. This is not easy. This is on a break. <laughs> Leaves a couple of people watching. 
two of his 19 points tonight. The reason why he's playing a lot is because of Kevin Foots and George Wallace not in uniform tonight. I think Sterling Mahan was so surprised that Stewart put that ball right in front of him. That's amazing. That's something that Sterling Mahan normally doesn't allow opponents to get away with. Mahan takes a rest. Shipley, Lowry, Pavlovich, Amaya. Take it back. Mahan down here hiding at three-point range. Again, they've been effective when they've been able to get it inside. Take it to Amaya. Lowry looking for the three. Takes the two. Hits nothing but net. Good job by Lowry. Had a shot initially, but he got a better one. Good recognition. St. Louis has been a team of streaks this year. One and five to start the year. Reeled off six victories in a row. They lost their last two. It's been a lot like our game tonight. We've been in streaks all night long. Just when you think they're about ready to lose the momentum, they come up with a big bucket. Six minutes to play, and who would have thought that St. Louis would be even in the game, let alone leading it by two. Duff. hit some big baskets for Rich Heron tonight. What I'm impressed with, he, he's not shy about putting it up under pressure. Stewart again. I'm not going to act surprised anymore. I think he's got a little confidence out there. He's shown us a little of everything he's got in his bag of tricks. He's got 21 tonight. And he's doing it against a couple of pretty good defenders on this Southern Illinois team. He's also doing it against experienced players. Lowry answers back. The Salukis with a two-point lead as we hit the five-minute mark. Well, the most important thing if you're Rich Grower is with five minutes to go, it was important that his team had an opportunity to win. They put themselves in a position where they can win this basketball game. Three different players have guarded Stewart tonight. Lowry, Mahan, and Bell. No one has stopped him. I don't blame Lowry. I'd back up, too. That's exactly what he's doing. Melvin Robinson set to check in. It's the seven-footer. Reese is bias. Again, the key, once Stewart gets it up, you've got to deny him getting it back. Cut off that communication. Pavlovich. Why not? Now, one of the interesting things about Pavlovich, it's 6'7", he can shoot over the smaller defenders, and he's doing it very effectively. Southern with their biggest lead of the second half. Pavlovich played with Vlade Divac on a couple of Yugoslavia national teams, so he has the experience. Coach Rick Heron said he just tries to do too much. He gets too excited. A lot of your foreign basketball players fundamentally aren't as sound as the American players because they don't have the opportunity to grow up through the ranks playing it. Who else? It's Stewart and Pavlovich stealing the headlines. Pavlovich four for four tonight, all three pointers. The Salukis with a two-point lead. And Pavlovich, he wanted the ball. That's a good sign. You like to see a player out there that wants it under pressure. It's easy to do it in practice. It's easy to do it in games. At the, it's not on the line. Very few players can really rise to the occasion when it counts. Pavlovich with the ball. He can feel it. He wants the ball. Shipley still can't answer his first two points of the night. The Billikens a chance. If you're St. Louis, you got to stay within what's got you here. Good job by Stewart. I thought he was going to put the shot up a little too quickly. This is what's got him here. No reason to change. 2.50 to go in the game. Don't do anything different. You've been effective doing it this way all night long. Don't change. Don't need to at this point. This offense has also given Stewart a chance to take a breath. It also gets him in a one-on-one -on -one position where he's been deadly. No too much that time, but he comes up with a big steal for three. Another one of those. You know, Rich Grower saying, set it up. No. Yeah, that's it, Orlando. Good shot. Billikens retake the lead. Stewart with 27 points. 
He came in averaging eight. They are on their feet in Keele Auditorium. Well, it's been one of those games that you really have to salute both clubs. It's been a great battle. It's been a fun game to watch. There's the senior. He's been through it before. He's the guy that wants to take it. 56-55, the Salukis, and Rich Brower wants to call a timeout. Southern Illinois leads it by one, but the momentum is probably with the Billikens. We're inside two minutes to play. Three-point shooting. Southern Illinois has had trouble. The rebounding has been a key for them. Luckafell hadn't been effective. Forget it. Stewart's the man. He is, his shoulders are going to be sore after this basketball game. And he scored the last 12 points in a variety of ways. Inside, outside, over, around, through. And he only comes in averaging eight. What a game for the sophomore. He has really played big tonight for Rich Brown. He's the guy you want the basketball. Now, he may not be the guy to take the shot. Look for the penetration, then he can dish it off if the shot's not available. Well, Luckefeld is back in there, and even though he's 0 for 5 from the field, Shipley with the block. He's got available. If you say before the game that either of those two players aren't effective, you expect the other team to have a big lead. It hadn't been that way. Each team has had players to step up and pick up the slack. Simply, you're shadowing him. Wherever he goes, and in the corner of your eye, you're watching where he goes. Pavlovich, he's not the guy on your scouting report you're supposed to be worried about. He is now. Billikens keep it alive. Good move. Spread that offense. This is what they've been effective at. Only down by one, so with a minute 30 to go, plenty of time. They're going to get the basketball back, even if they don't score on this possession. That's Rich Brower right by the score panel. As he tells his team to attack with 24 seconds left on the shot clock. We'd like to see Stewart in an isolation possibility where he can create, if it's there, put the shot up, or dish if the defense collapses on him. The long rebound, dump. And they reset the shot clock, and we are inside a minute to play. He's more effective when he's penetrating because he's, he's got a quickness advantage. Also, you've got the foul possibility. If you don't get the shot, you've got an opportunity to be fouled. I like to see him driving to the basket, trying to create something. He's more effective that way. Melvin Robinson. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Stewart looking to put his team ahead. Lowry right in his face. Couldn't come up with it. Ball on the floor. Pavlovich comes up with a loose ball. And Amaya very close to walking that time. Transpired. The seven Illinois players keep looking at the scoreboard in disbelief. They keep shaking their head. They can't believe that it's this close. They defeated the Billikens earlier this year by 39 points at Southern Illinois. You also got to remember, they come in averaging 84 points a game. They're well under that, struggling to get into the 60s. There will be no free throw shot. We thought they had called an intentional foul on luck to fill. Grabbing Mayhan, but Rick Shipley will throw the ball in for the Saluki. 17 yeah. seconds to go. The problem for St. Louis, they've only got 14 fouls. They've got to get three more before they can force Southern Illinois into the one and one. So they've got to go for the steal or the immediate foul. Very quick. Too much time. Got to be quicker. This is a great rivalry between these two. School is separated by about two hours driving time. Pavlovich foul. quick goes to the line with a chance to put his team up the way Pavlovich is shot tonight he's not the guy ideally you want to put on the line he shoots 81 percent from the line the Salukis have only attempted seven free throws in this game they're four for seven St. Louis no more timeouts both teams in the bonus we do have a jump ball it'll go to the Billikens Pavlovich shooting into a sea of students. First free throw, the key. They're only up by one. Would like to stretch it to at least a two-point lead. Shipley comes down with the biggest rebound of the game. That free throw shooter. And his first free throw attempt of the night. He has yet to score. For St. Louis, you can't afford another offensive rebound. 
Stewart with the rebound as we kick it down to five. We've got one second left on the clock as who else but Orlando Stewart gives the Billikens the lead. Amazing, he has been unbelievable tonight. John, we gotta come up with a better adjective for him. Again, the starting backcourt is Foots and Wallace. He's not here if those guys are playing. Watch him, three Salukis all around him. Now four, in traffic, puts it up. Big basket, big basket. He's a sophomore, folks. He even double clutched. If you'll see, there's a hand in his face as Shipley gets a hand up and he double clutches. Look right there. there, four Salukis all around him. Nobody can stop him. And he answers the club that lost by 39 in December. Now two seconds away of winning and avenging that earlier loss. They did put one more second back on the clock. Stewart has scored 14 straight points. They're gonna have to change their nickname from the Billikens to the Stewarts because St. Louis has been Orlando Stewart tonight. They needed a guy to step forward. And, you know, we talked about adversity and all the guys in the situation. You could just sense that this team came together very close. Stewart was the key man. We talked about it in the beginning. He had to be the guy to quarterback the club. Look what he's done. 24 points in this half alone. Now, I don't want to sound like Jimmy the Greek, but when we were at dinner tonight and we're saying St. Louis has no chance, I said, I think they're going to keep it close. You said that? Uh, I knew, I knew you would. You did, yes, I'll stand, you did. All right. And for no reason, the reason I gave was they had no reason to keep it close. Something had to happen, and that's the reason. That's what college basketball is all about. What an unbelievable, what a fitting end, though, that Orlando Stewart would be the guy to put it up and in. The way this game's gone, don't count Southern Illinois out just yet. Two seconds, enough time. Going to call another timeout. What they did is the guy they want to have. Well, that's ideally what you like, but you've only got two seconds, so whoever gets the, the pass has got to look to put it up immediately. Well, we're cheating a little bit. I don't think St. Louis can see our monitor here, but one of the assistant coach is coming over and looking right now at the play. So an assistant from St. Louis is coming over to see what Rich Heron is diagramming. I don't know if that's fair or not. That's the home court advantage. I guess, I guess. it is. It's their court. They can they can do anyway, whatever they want to. Looks like he's going to one of the baseline corners outside the three-point line. They'll take it wherever they can get it. With two seconds left, as soon as the player gets the basketball, you got to put that shot up. If you're St. Louis, no foul. If you want to deny, contend anything, but don't create a foul because Southern Illinois is in the one-in-one -one situation. John Mulroy, one of the assistants, came over to look at our ESPN monitor to see what Rich Heron was diagramming. And he is pointing his players to the corners exactly where Heron diagrammed the play. Well, Amaya is the player over on the right. Wait a minute, wait, I don't see how the clock can start. The clock should not have started. Excellent job by Ed Hightower, immediately on it. The basketball game, the clock cannot start until it touches somebody on the floor. That pass was in the air, did not touch anybody. They gotta put two seconds back on the clock. Good job by the officials. It's another part of the home court advantage, I guess. We may have a replay of the 72 Olympics with the Soviets and the United States. The game that would never end. It still hasn't ended. Nobody Good touches job. it. Good job by Ed Hightower. Now, if nobody touches this, inbounds play. That doesn't start the clock. He's still out of bounds. Nobody touches it. Still nobody touches it. The clock has now gone off. Good job by the official. Two seconds to go. The Billikens leading it by one. In what would have to be one of the biggest upsets in college basketball. Not that Southern Illinois is a great team, but St. Louis came in here undermanned. And they were hoping if they kept it within 20 points that they would be having a pretty good evening because Southern Illinois is a veteran team. They've got Shipley, Mahan, they've got strength inside. They have everything. St. Louis, they've had one thing tonight, Orlando Stewart. And that's enough right now to give them the one point lead as the officials talk it over. Now let's watch. Clock still shouldn't start. The clock started. Nobody's touched that basketball. It's the, the game's over. It should be 
Southern Illinois basketball because the clock ran out, should never have started. So Southern Illinois should get the basketball out underneath St. Louis basket. That's exactly what will happen. Even though St. Louis came up with the inbounds pass. The time had expired. If you saw the replay there, the clock had already run down. So what you should do and what they're going to do is restart the whole thing over. Started again with two seconds. It'll be Southern Illinois basketball. Good job of the officials. They've made the correct call. That's the important thing. Rich Heron did not diagram a play. So he will probably stay with the one. Well, actually, you know, it's fortunate for the Salukis because nobody was there to receive that. It was only St. Louis, so the clock would have run out. They're going to get a second chance. Shipley Mayhan for the game winner. Rich Brower pulls off the stutter. to try to see if we can stop Orlando Stewart and bring him back out here. The Billikens surprise the Salukis 57-56.